How can you know for sure if you truly have the Holy Spirit? Well, I want to give you seven biblical signs that will prove once and for all that you have the Holy Spirit. So, if you've ever doubted or wondered concerning the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, or if you know someone who wonders if they have the Holy Spirit, then this message is for you. These truths will solidify this revelation in your heart once and for all. So the first sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life is this. Number one, confidence in salvation. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, For His Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. So many believers doubt or wonder whether or not they have the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. They ask things like, have I truly received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Or has the Holy Spirit left me because of some mistake that I've made? But the wonderful truth that the scripture gives to us is this. When the Holy Spirit takes up residence in the individual, that is the person who has received Christ as Lord, then the Holy Spirit gets to work at affirming the truth, namely that you belong to God in your heart. So, the Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit is that voice, that assurance, that seal of promise upon us that tells us that we, in fact, belong to God. So, confidence in your salvation is proof, is a sign that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Now, I understand that this might make some believers a little bit nervous because when hearing this, those of you who are wondering, do I have the presence of the Holy Spirit, may say to yourself, well, I wonder if I have the presence of the Holy Spirit and therefore I probably don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit. But it's not really that simple. You see, whereas the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking to us and affirming to us that we are in fact children of God, the enemy is also speaking. The enemy is also sowing seeds of doubt. So this measurement of, well, I have doubt and therefore I don't belong to God is not a good measurement at all because there is a war, there is a battle, there is a inner dialogue that goes back and forth between good and evil. And this inner dialogue causes us to at one moment believe that we belong to God and in the next moment doubt that we belong to God. But this is how you know you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Deep within your spirit, you know that you know that you know that you belong to God. There is confidence deep within you. Now, you may battle in your emotions. On some days, you may not feel like you belong to God. You may battle mentally. You may sometimes think like you don't belong to God. But deep within your spirit, there is always this underlying peace, this deep and still knowing that you, in fact, have salvation, that you, in fact, are a child of God. And that truly is the work of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So number one, a sign that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit is that you are confident in your salvation. Number two is godly character. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 say, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Character, not charisma, is the standard of the Spirit. You know that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, not necessarily because the power of God rests on your life, though that is one of the signs, but because the character of Christ is being developed in you. The character of Christ is the ultimate sign that you, in fact, belong to God, that you, in fact, carry the presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, people can fake the power. They can pretend to pray in tongues. They can pretend to do miracles. They can pretend to live godly lives all while living a double standard. But the proof that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the proof that the Holy Spirit's presence dwells in you, is that you are a little bit more like Jesus today than you were yesterday. The proof is in how you live. The proof is in how you carry yourself. The proof is in how you walk according to godly standards. Are you living with godly character? Number three, passion and power for evangelism. 
Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You'll notice here that the scripture tells us that when the presence of the Holy Spirit comes upon someone, or when His power comes upon someone, they become witnesses. So, we see that an individual will receive a power to evangelize and a passion to evangelize, a desire to carry that out. There is this godly boldness that comes over someone who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, His passion becomes your passion. And His passion is the name of Jesus. His passion is the gospel. The Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest evangelist. The Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest worship leader. Nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. Nobody loves the gospel like the Holy Spirit loves the gospel. Nobody desires to win the lost like the Holy Spirit desires to win the lost. And when His presence dwells in your life, that power and that passion both become evident in you. Number four, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, I want to be very clear here because this is where a lot of the debate centers around. Some will say that you need to pray in tongues in order to be saved, or you need to pray in tongues in order to prove that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, this isn't true. I must say this, I believe in the gift of speaking in tongues. I believe in it strongly, in fact, more so than most people who you'll hear. And I talk about it more often than most people you'll hear. But I want to emphasize here that speaking in tongues is not the sign that you've received the Holy Spirit. It is a sign that you've received the Holy Spirit. It's a manifestation of an inner reality. It is not in and of itself the reality. So, Acts chapter 2, verses 32 through 33 say this, God raised Jesus from the dead. And we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. Well, what were the people seeing the church do? They were seeing the church receive the Holy Spirit. They were seeing the fire of God come upon the church. So they were seeing the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, it says, and hear. Well, what were they hearing? They were hearing the believers praying in tongues. They were hearing the believers praying in their own languages, which was a supernatural manifestation based upon what they were praying as what many would call gibberish. These people were speaking in, in what some would call gibberish, but the hearers heard it in their own language. I know that because the crowd, singular, spoke in tongues, and each, which represented multiple languages, heard them in their own language. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39, the Bible says, So, my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and don't forbid speaking in tongues. Well, some would say, well, praying in tongues is the supernatural ability to pray in an earthly language. This is not so because 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 says, For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God, since people won't be able to understand you. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. No one can understand because tongues is not an earthly language. It can manifest as an earthly language miraculously, but at its source, it is what many would call gibberish. But we know there is power in that heavenly language. So, that is one of the signs of speaking in tongues. Number five, a love for Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because He has given us the Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts with His love. The Holy Spirit places the love of God within you. Not only do you learn to love others as the presence of the Holy Spirit is manifested in your life, but you also develop a passionate love for the person of Jesus. You develop a love for Jesus Himself. As I said earlier, nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And if you'll surrender to Him, the Holy Spirit wants to place this love in your heart. He wants to fan into flame the fires of first love. He wants to cultivate within you 
a passion for the name of Jesus. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know it because you're obsessed with Jesus. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know it because you can't stop talking about Jesus. You want to talk to your friends about Jesus. You want to talk to your family about Jesus. You want to talk to your coworkers about Jesus. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. You become a Jesus person. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came to glorify Jesus. He came to testify of Jesus. And so when you get the presence of the Holy Spirit like that, that same passion, that same love spills over you from deep within your spirit and you become obsessed with Jesus. It is a holy obsession that overtakes your being and you become 100% a Jesus person person. You talk Jesus. You think Jesus. You live Jesus. You breathe Jesus. Everything in you wants to know and share about Jesus. So that's number five, a love for Jesus. Number six, knowledge of truth. First John chapter two, verse 27 says, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the spirit teaches you everything you need to know and what he teaches is true, it is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you, when the presence of the Holy Spirit has overtaken your life, truth overflows your being. Truth is received deep within. Truth becomes your portion. You receive revelation from God. You begin to understand the deeper things of the scripture. You begin to understand the truth of God's presence. You begin to understand the truth of holiness. You understand the truth of the word, the truth of the cross and the blood. And these truths become yours. These treasures that God has hidden only for those who love him, only for those who he can trust, only for those who carry his spirit, those treasures become yours. And finally, number seven, and this should be an obvious one, one of the signs that you have received the presence of the Holy Spirit, or that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, is that you walk in holiness. Number seven is holiness. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. The Spirit has made you holy. Well, he is called the Holy Spirit. I like to call him the Holiness Spirit. In other words, when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, sin begins to lose its allure. Sin starts to look like what it is. Disgusting, dark, vile. You begin to hate what God hates when the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Even if what the Holy Spirit hates is something that you do. This is a mark of the Spirit-filled. They walk in holiness. They resist sin. They flee temptation. They don't set evil things before their eyes. They don't talk about evil things. They don't even want to hear evil things. They live sanctified. They live separate. They live in the protection of God's presence. And that is a sign, a true sign, that you have the Holy Spirit. So to recap, number one, confidence in salvation. Two, godly character. Three, passion and power for evangelism. Four, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Five, a love for Jesus. Six, knowledge of the truth. And seven, holiness. So, let me ask you, do you carry any of these markers in your life? Now, you may lack some. You may be working on some. You may be growing in some. And that's okay. As long as there is progress, that means the Holy Spirit is at work. So, if you have these signs in your life, you don't need to worry. Stop doubting. Stop fretting. If you don't have any of these signs in your life, then I think it's time that you come to meet Jesus. I think it's time that you come to truly be filled with His Holy Spirit. Because those who meet Jesus receive His Spirit. It's that simple. At salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. So, if you're not sure if you're saved, maybe you doubt your salvation. I want to pray with you. Now, you have to understand that 
you aren't saved by a prayer. You're saved by a person. Prayer never saved a soul. Only Jesus saves. So as you repeat after me now, you're not being saved by this prayer. This is not a ritual. And you're not finished just because you pray this prayer. This is just the starting point. All I'm doing is leading you in surrendering to Jesus. But you have to actually surrender to Him. And when you do, He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit. Maybe you're a believer and you have some doubts. Maybe you're someone who's never received Christ. Or maybe you're someone who did at one point, but you've never seen this fruit manifest. So you doubt if, whether or not that conversion experience was real in the first place. Well, let's be finished with this. Let's settle the matter right now. Let's come to Jesus. Let's go to Him together. I'm going to talk to Him right now, and I want you to talk to Him with me. And He's going to hear you. He's looking at you right now. He's listening to you right now. He sees you. He hears you. He loves you. He's calling you. You're not watching this by accident. Let's pray and repeat after me and say it to Him from your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And I ask you, Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me new. I don't understand it all, but I turn to you now. I need your help, Jesus. Forgive me. Save me. And be my Lord. I'm turning everything over to you now. I'll follow you. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson and the prayer. And if you prayed that, I'm so glad and I'm so happy that we were able to experience this together. You just gave your heart to Jesus. And if you truly, sincerely prayed that from deep within your heart and, and you actually approached God and you actually came to Him in sincerity, I believe He heard you. Now work out your salvation with Him. He finished everything that needed to be done to save you. Just approach Him and go to Him. 